it's spring down here in this part of the world now, so I'm looking forward to getting outside and getting more shit done. But on a cold, wet, miserable day like today, it's time to take another look at this. If you haven't seen my first video on this, it'll be up in the top corner up here. You probably should watch that first. Uh, some of this video may not make any sense. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, this thing checks batteries if you didn't know. This will tell you information about Makita 18 volt batteries and with this adapter you can check out the 40 volt batteries as well. Now if you watched that video you would have heard me ask for any other suggestions. I got a few suggestions of other things people wanted to see with this thing. One of which that I of course wanted to do was check out a knackered battery. So thanks to Mitchell for sending me this. Cheers bro. Um, you won't be getting it back but hey it's all for a good cause. So we're going to put that to the test. We're also going to test a couple of 6 amp hour batteries up against each other. One of which has done over 200 charges, one of which has only done about 10% of that. Is there going to be a drop off in how long they last on your tool? We're going to check that out. And we're also going to look a bit more into when a battery is fully charged, when it actually counts as a click on the battery counter. This thing says it's had 20 charges, has it really only had 19 charges that were between 80 and 100%? We're going to test that sort of thing, take it off the Put it on a tool when it's at 100, use it for 2 seconds, put it back on, does that count as another charge, that sort of thing. So let's get stuck into it. First up I want to look at this 40 volt 5 amp hour battery which I've just been using on the blower. I love that blower, it's got a hell of a lot of oomph to it. So we'll stick on that, turn her on. So tool on, battery on. This is a dead battery, not dead but not charged. So. It's had a total of 10 charges, it's only one or two since the last time you saw this battery. As you can see there, it is down to, it's not quite on nothing, just above nothing. 15 degrees Celsius on the inside, the battery health is all good. And this is what I wanted to see, 31.4 volts. So this is a 36 volt battery, or 40 volt max. It has a burn mark on it here. I don't know if you can see that in the video. That was from... <laughs> The angle grinder video I made, um, I think it was when I was using the 7 inch grinder and I was spraying sparks at myself and I set myself on fire which in turn melted the edge of the battery there. Unfortunately it's not in the shot, I'll put it in a video one day but you can't actually see the fire which is a bit annoying. I set myself on fire for nothing, a waste. If you're gonna set yourself on fire, always do it on film. It's like YouTube 101. But I digress, 31.4 volts. When actually, when I, when I first looked down and I saw um, that it, there was a fire, I was grinding away, just glanced down, saw a fire coming from what I thought was the battery. I thought the battery was on fire and I thought, holy shit, and I quickly pulled the tool away from me and then, yeah, realized it was my overalls. That's one of the reasons I wear overalls sometimes when I'm filming things. Anywho, 31.4 volts, so, it's only, it's less than 5 volts, 4.6 volts below the 36 before it's knackered. So it holds that voltage pretty high throughout its functioning life on the tool. So here we have, has it ever been overheated? Not really, we've got a few starting to move up towards the middle there. And as for overloaded, a bit more so. Heading up towards the higher end here, it's only had 10 charges so not a lot of data on here yet. And of course it's going to be okay on the end. If you don't know what all these things mean, I explained them more in that first video which is up there. So what we're going to do with this tool now is put it on the charger. I'm going to take it off when it hits green, when it's 80%, when it's at that charged enough to use sort of phase that Makita have for their batteries. Once that green light's on, they put that on there so you can go, oh yep, yeah, it's just about charged, I can whip it off and use it now because I'm in a hurry. So when it hits green, I'm going to take it off and we're going to put it on here and we're going to see if it now reads 11 because it currently reads 10 as you will recall. If it stays on 10, once it hits green, we'll then run it up to fully charged and then put it back on here. Presumably it'll say 11 at that point and then I'll use it for a few seconds. We'll chuck it back on the charger and see if it clicks up to 12. And away we go. Why have I stuck this on the bench? This is going to be way too noisy, isn't it? It's going to carry on filming while this is charging, but 
There's the second fan kicking in. This has one fan to keep the internals of the charger cool and another fan that blows air through the batteries. Not that this one really needs it at the moment, seeing as it's only 15 degrees Celsius. But how annoying is that sound on camera? Um, I think we'll go put it somewhere else, though. So, we'll use that as a little test, though. I've started charging it. Is it going to count as a charge? Is it as soon as you put it on the charger? We know from the last video that that is, shouldn't be the case. But let's have a wee check here. I should still say 10. Yes, it does. I'll stick this on the charger somewhere else so it's out of noise range and we'll carry on with the other test. So next up these 6 amp hour batteries. Let's turn this back on. We're gonna see just whether these are charged or not. What am I doing? What am I doing? Hundred and ninety-eight charges, fully charged. Down one bar here. This is why we are doing this test. We're looking at three quarters battery health on this, so is it gonna be depleted in the time it can run for? Other than that though, happy here. Battery cells showing they're down a bit, which means I think I'll chuck this on the charger before we do this test. 19.1 volts, down a little bit, should be showing closer to 20. And we've got three bars down on the cells, so we'll chuck this on the charger before we do the test. And everything else good, of course. So 198 and 75% health. What about this one? 23, haven't used it since I made the last video. It is now my test battery, this one. So it only gets used for Makita videos such as this. Everything good there, hasn't been over discharged or anything. Full 100% battery life. 19.7 volts, so a little bit higher than this. We wanna try and get those as close as possible before we start this test. And it's only one bar down on each of those, but we'll chuck these both on a dual charger together in a moment. Everything else, of course, all good. So I'll chuck those on the charger as well, along with the 40 volt, and then we'll check this one. Have you ever been in a room with 40 volt Makita chargers and 18 volt dual chargers and everything all running, like half a dozen of them? It, you almost need hearing protection. Anyway, let's take a look at this battery. This is old school, there's no battery gauge here. It's a 3 amp hour Makita battery sent to me, as I said, by Mitchell. And let's see what happens when we put it on. I haven't actually tested this to see if it works. Let's just quickly... He told me it's dead, so I assume it is. Oh, dude, what happened then? One tiny little spurt out of it, eh? Right, let's have a wee look-see. How many charges has it had? 396 charges, and it is completely flat. Battery health, gone. Nothing there at all, saying it's dead. It is saying it has been over-discharged 50% of its life. Dude, what have you done to this poor battery? Wow. What that means is it's basically been over-discharged 200 times out of the 400 that it's been alive. That's pretty harsh. Did you keep pulling the trigger after it was cutting out just trying to get that extra little bit like we do? It's not good for the battery, dude. 14.8 volts. Woo, and here we go. Look at this. Number three. So that's the third pair, because unfortunately there's 10 cells in here, but it only reads as five because they're paralleled up, so each each cell is really two cells. So the third one, at least one of those two, is knackered by the looks. That'll be what the problem with this battery is. When we get to the end here, we've got two issues coming up. One is it's saying the battery is damaged in that the cells are damaged. If this one was highlighted, it means the internal circuitry is damaged, but this is saying the cell is damaged. I'll try and see if we can get some extra voltage into this somehow. I'll try it on all my different charges and see if any of them will give it a kick. We'll see what happens, but I'll just check what that was again, 14.8. See, these cells are quite uneven. The one and the four, are reading four bars, the two and the five are reading three, and that one, like I said, in the middle there, number three, nothing. There are some that say when you've got one of these knackered batteries, if you put it on the slow charges, you're much more likely to get a result, and the rapid chargers will say it's dead. Anyway, this is a rapid charger. It's the dual 18 and 12 volt. Let's just see what happens here. Should get some weird lighting. There we do. It's like Christmas. Red and green flashing light. This battery is boogered, according to this. 
And there's the noise of our 6 amp hour batteries next door being charged. Now I don't have a slow charger at the moment to shut up to test this, um, but I can test it now on this one, see if we get anything. Good. Not only does it flash, it also beeps and says, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it, get it off me, get it off me, get it off me. Um, I'll test it on the 40 volt charger once we've finished charging that 40 volt battery and I'll chuck it on another rapid charger I've got. Got this one hiding around the corner so that the noise is as far away from filming as possible. Let's just see what happens if we give it a little tickle with this. Is it going to do anything? Let that sit for a few minutes, see if anything will happen. It doesn't look like it's going to. This is just a 12 volt car battery charger. Now there's 6 amp hour ones, one of them's off the charger as you saw, the second one is about to come off. So it'll be interesting if that triggered a count on the charge, seeing as both of them were pretty much charged. They've taken a long time, considering they were reading fully charged on this to finish themselves off, top themselves off. They both started without the green light on. I've found that happens quite a lot with certain batteries, usually the 5s and 6s. You think, okay, it's, it's almost charged, I'll just give it a, a quick top up before I put it away or something, and then it takes half an hour and you think, well, it only needed a tiny little bit. And then other times you take it off, you can use it for a few minutes, stick it back on, and it basically still says it's charged. It'll just kick straight into the green light and say, no, nah, I'm done. So, there's some inconsistencies with these things. There it is now. Right, so our 6 amp hours are off the charger. This is the better of the two batteries. Is it now reading 24? Yes, it is. And so this one should be 199. Yep, so fully charged, 199. Still showing that one bar down on the health of the batteries. 20.2 volts. It's good, everything fully topped up there. So you can see that this had dropped a volt. Was it only 19.1 I think? So it dropped a volt just sitting around waiting to be used and as you can see I was using it just, well, when was I using it? Yesterday? Day before? Then charged it up. So it's only been 24 hours, maybe 48 hours at the most and it's lost a volt. That's quite a lot. Everything all good here. 20 volts. So it hasn't actually charged the better battery up higher than the older crappier battery. Interesting. Is that going to make a difference in the runtime? Let's go take a look. Wow, look at that. Just having this battery on this charger for a couple of minutes has put some life back into that number three there. So that's maybe one of the one of the two cells is actually charging. And we're up to 16.2 volts. That's interesting. I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer. And then we'll put it on a charger and see if it's actually going to charge. I'm going to be a bit annoyed if I've saved the battery this easily because I wanted to use this battery of Mitchell's for another video in which the battery might not have survived. So I'm going to be miffed if I've saved the battery and I have to come up with a different idea. Anyway, and to show just how inaccurate these fuel gauge bars are on batteries, as you can see the charger is flashing blue which means it's less than 80%. Once it gets to 80% it stays solid blue and then it's green when it's fully charged. But let's take a look four bars on the battery. So the battery says it's 100% charged, the charger says it's not even 80%. What's going on there then? Alright, that 40 volt battery must be close to 80% till we get to that though. Let's take another look at this. It's been a few more minutes. I don't know how long it's been on there in total. Less than 10 minutes. Let's take a look at this so-called knackered battery. Not showing any charge. That's an interesting factor there. So no charge showing. Still knackered battery health. But the voltage is going up. We're on 16.6. .6. In theory, that's high enough to get the charger to kick in to charge this thing. Let's see if that works. First, let's just see actually if it'll run anything. No, nothing happening. 
It's not a happy battery. But before we check that on the charger, this one has just hit the 80% mark according to its charger. Let's take a wee look-see here. 11. We have gone up. It was on 10, right? So it's hit 80% and gone up a charge. Now that I've taken it off the charger, when we put it back on and it gets to 100% charged and that green light comes on, is it going to now stay 12? Interesting. It was on 10, eh? I should have written this stuff down. I can go back and check it on the camera, of course. Anyway, let's go chuck it back on the charger. Back to the neck at 18 volt. Is it going to charge? Have we made any improvements? No. Still Christmas lights. I'll give it a decent run on that 12 volt charger now and we'll just see if anything happens. See if we can get a charge to show up on that front screen. So I haven't fully charged this yet. I chucked it on the battery charger. It starts flashing when you first put it on there. Once it went to solid blue again, I took it off and it's shown another charge. So that's a worry. Let's see if it'll do that again. So when you first put them on, it's checking the battery. The battery's just flashing. And then eventually that'll go solid because it knows it's over 80% charged already. Right, has that just triggered another count on this battery? Let's have a look. It just says 13. No, still 12. Interesting. Okay, let's run it right to the top. I'm going to run it till that light goes to solid green. Wish this charger was a bit quieter for making YouTube videos. Listen to that. 65 decibels. We read it when we did a test on it on another video. Right, let's chuck this straight on and see if we're now on, what was it, 13? Yes, 13. Okay, so that's interesting and confusing. Seemed to trigger it twice when it hit 80% and then once again when it hit the top. So it seems anything from 80% up will trigger a count on the battery. I wasn't quite expecting that, I don't think. So I'll test an 18 volt one shortly and we'll see if that, when it hits 80%, does the same thing. Now the battery is 29 degrees inside, so it has doubled in temperature effectively while it has been charging, even with that fan running through it. It's a pretty cold day today. How cold is it in here? It's only 17 degrees Celsius. If it was the middle of summer here, or you were in Australia, then that's going to get pretty damn hot, I would have thought even on the charger. It would be interesting to see if it can keep it around that 30 degrees Celsius. I might have to test it in the middle of summer if I remember. If we can keep it around that 30 degrees Celsius with the fans going at any time of year. Everything else all good. We're at 41.6 volts. But have I just lost a couple of charges out of the life of this battery? If you are one of those who believe that these batteries are set to only do a certain amount of charges, before the charger that you put it on says, nah, not charging that one anymore, it's hit its number. If that is the case, then I've just wasted two charge, three charges, wasn't it? No, no, I had to do one anyway. So yeah, we've wasted a couple of charges on this extraordinarily expensive battery. But if it's just done on the life of the cells, the healthiness of the cells, that sort of thing, then those two charges aren't gonna count for much at all. Let's do another knackered battery update. Take the charger off it. What voltage are we going to read now? Can we get this up to 18? 16.9. We are going up. But as you can see, the cells are not going up evenly. 4 and 1, well ahead of 3. And also slightly ahead of 2 and 5. Just like it looked at the beginning. And it seems to be going up at the same ratio. But I'll keep charging it. We'll see what happens. And earlier I said I was going to test this battery on this charger with the adapter. Um, there's a little problem with that. This is the insides of that particular adapter. Um, if you saw this video, you will have seen me pull this to bits and hack it up 
and yeah I haven't got round to making it a functional battery charger again because well I don't need to because I've got plenty of 18 volt chargers but if I do recall I did release some of the dreaded blue smoke from this thing so I don't know if she will ever charge again um, maybe I'll put it back together at some point there's some yeah there's some black on there hmm yeah I can't even really remember what happened maybe I'll have to go watch that video as well there's another part of the inside of it so yeah if anyone wants to donate a um, adapter that they don't use <laughs> Greatly appreciated. I just chucked it on a Makita charger and still not happy. Still Christmas lights, so I've stuck it back on the battery charger again. Unfortunately, it's only a 12 volt, so yeah, I need a 24 volt one really. But I might just let that sit for another couple of hours and see what happens. Another thing Mitchell mentioned, Mitchell's the guy who sent me the battery, remember, is that the batteries have a number on them that tells you the year they were manufactured. So I've noticed this on the 12 volt, the 18 volt, the 40 volt, they all have a number, looks like a serial number type number, and that number, the first two digits, are the year it was manufactured. So if we take a look at this 18 volt here, the first two digits here are 18. In other words, it was made in 2018. Another 2018 one here. Some of these newer ones also have a QR code on them. Has anybody ever tried getting that to work? Where's my phone? Pretty small. I don't know if the phone will be good enough to pick it up. Why would they put a QR code on these things? Why did I just click that? You want camera up? It's not recognizing it as a QR code. Anyway, so that says 2018. So all these 40 volt ones I've got. Uh, predominantly 2020 these are the 4 amp hours I know some of you are thinking hey we only got Makita 40 volt tools in 2021 but no the rest of us had them much earlier <laughs> 2019 on this one and my 5 amp hour battery has 2021 if you hold it up the right way it would be better so you can easily check how old your batteries are if you've forgotten when you got them or you want to work out roughly which ones you got in what order this is a 3 amp hour that I got earlier on in the year at field days and it is a 21 nice fresh battery I did often wonder if the freebies that they gave away were old ones but no it's a brand new good battery and the number again here on the 12 volt 2016 so how old is this one that we're slowly charging here what year has this one got on it 2011 so it's a 10 year old battery so those cells even if you weren't using it and thrashing it they're gonna be struggling a bit just with depletion over time batteries don't last forever I'll now chuck these 18 volt batteries we'll start with the newer one the one with the 24 chargers onto this 18 volt blower and we will time it see if there's any difference It's a pity that these 18 volt ones don't show the heat inside the battery like they do on the 40 volt because it's quite warm after that, of course. Right, completely depleted, still showing full health, never been overworked this battery. 14.9 volts, all the cells reading one bar. All good. What about the other one? So, nice and warm off the charger, off the tool. This should be 200 charges. Yep. And showing a few percent there. Whoa. This is the battery, if you do recall, was not showing full health. Now it is. Why is that? That's interesting. Okay. 16.6 .6 volts. So the other one was only 14 something. 14.9, was it? And we've got two bars showing on each cell when it was only showing one on the previous one. So that's interesting as well. What about 
that's the end of it. So what about this one that's now been sitting on the bench for, uh, it's been quite a while, it's probably been about an hour and a half. 25 charges, a little bit there. Were they both like that? Anyway, that's not the one I want to look at. 15.4. So this has recovered about half a volt, but still significantly, still over a volt down on the other battery, and we're only showing one bar on each of those cells. So it seemed the tool drained this battery lower before it cut out. This one cut out a bit earlier. So why is that? That makes it hard to sort of compare, doesn't it? Yeah, and that is a problem with these 6 amp hour batteries. I find they come and go all over the place. But it does give me hope that the 40 volt that I had that was showing, or actually two of them I think, that was showing, let's see if it was this one, white dot on it, yep this is the one. This one is showing that it's not on full health when it's, you know, almost a brand new battery. 10 charges, and look at that. Bit disappointed there, but maybe it will come back. Maybe with a few charge cycles, depleting right down, up and down a few times, may just sort that out. That may be what we just saw on the 6 amp hour on the 18 volt, needed to go right down, get a few full charges, full depletions to get that health back up. I don't know, discuss what you think about that down in the comments. So this battery is almost completely drained and it's reading 32.9, couple of bars on each cell. So is there anything else? Where were we at with everything else? Have I done all the tests I was going to do? Kind of lost track. I was running backwards and forwards doing so many things there with batteries and testers and chargers and what have you. Uh, the tool that I just used is the DUB184. DUB184? Yes, the DUB184. Um, if you want to see more on that, I will be using it in an upcoming video up against the 40 volt model. I guess we should have another look here at this and then maybe I'll let it sit for a few more hours after that and I'll do a wrap up. Okay, still just a tiny bit of charge showing. Absolutely knackered battery health. 17.4, it's not really getting past that. So stuck on that 17.4. If we look down here, Mitchell, this is your problem mate. Your cells on either side of the middle are okay, but the ones you've got in the center here, I think you've fried them, eh? You've gotten them too hot. You have given this poor battery a thrashing and, and a dunny I like it. And I don't think we're gonna be able to recover it due to that. What happens if we jumpstart one of these batteries with one of these batteries? Or maybe we should just start with one of these batteries. How would that go? Can we get any action from it on at all? No. Does the lights, but that's about it. Maybe it'll work on a torch. <laughs> Maybe it will work on the torch. Maybe I'll go get the torch. Right, let's just see if this torch works. This is with a normal battery that's not buggered. Okay, we're all good. Chuck on Mitchell's knackered battery. And what's gonna happen? Oh, it works on a torch. So it's just a rare one cell that's just letting the team down, I reckon, and that cell was okay. This battery would probably work because it's got enough power to get the torch going. So it is still working. Interesting. Now, is there anything else I'm going to do to this battery? So I could try that jump start method where I hook it up with one of these other batteries, i.e., put the battery on the charger, a couple of wires coming out of the terminals, going over to this battery. To charge this but even if it works it'll probably only work once it's not going to let the charger charge it by itself it's just not worth it and I think that there's a cell stuffed in the middle anyway and if that cell is corroded or in some way compromised it's dangerous you know could end up catching on fire setting your house on fire not really worth it for a stuffed old battery that wouldn't last much longer anyway because the other cells aren't reading much either I don't think so you know I think that's about it. I think she's she's pretty much done. But I will let it sit just a little bit longer and slowly just see if it'll absorb a bit more charge. See if we can get one of these tools to turn over. To do that tiny little spark on the beginning on the old DTM 5.2 multi-tool. 
So maybe the fact that this isn't getting over 17 volts is because that one cell's knackered and so the other cells are charging completely but that one cell's letting the side down and stopping us from getting to that 18 to 20 volt sort of range. Also, if anyone's wondering if this doesn't have the protection and that's why it's overcharged so many times, doesn't have star protection because it's an old battery. You can tell if you've got star protection by this little star up in the corner of your battery here. They're also on the tools as well. That means it's got over discharge protection, heat protection, that sort of thing. As long as you use it on a tool with a star as well, the tool and the battery will tell each other don't stuff up and it'll cut out when it gets too hot, overloaded, that sort of thing. So, does this one have the star? Well, it may be a stinking old battery, but it must be one of the first ones probably that had the star. There it is there. Once the star ones came out, I got rid of my non-star batteries pretty fast. Okay, I don't know if there's any point charging this much further. What are we... It's been... Well, it's been most of today, so it's probably been about six hours that this thing has been on and off this charger. So let's have one final look here. It's not getting any more charged on this 12 volt charger. Battery health. That's the that's the killer here. Nothing there. And that shot there. We're not getting over 17.4 volts, but the big thing, that number three slot. Remember these are in parallel, so each one of these is actually two cells, so these ones are probably alright. This one I'd say one of the batteries might be alright and one of them's knackered. So, sorry Mitchell, your battery is stuffed mate, but I guess you already knew that. Um, I have some other interesting battery videos coming up sometime soon, I haven't filmed them yet. Maybe I never will, so I shouldn't get your hopes up I suppose, but hopefully I will. I'm pretty sure I will. Don't want to give any more away in case somebody else does it first and copies me. So thanks for watching guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I nearly forgot something again. If you watched the other video I did on this, you would have heard me talk about powering it with other power sources via the USB port in the back. Well, I forgot to do it in that video. And I finished this video a couple of weeks ago and I was editing it and then somebody left a comment on a video somewhere and I realized, oh shit, I haven't done it on this video either. So, here we go. USB. There is a micro USB port here in the back. Let's plug our power bank into that. I never get these things up the right way. Power it on and we have a USB symbol at the top here. But I do still have something else going on here. And that is, oh, it's still got the batteries in it. So it's gonna work anyway. So let's just whip those out. Right, no batteries in it. Let's now plug the USB back in. I got it wrong way around again. Are you kidding me? And power on. Oh, and powered straight back off again. And power on. What's happened there? Must have just been a loose connection there somewhere. Test it's going to work, eh? So there you go, you can power it from a power bank. Can you also power it from a Makita battery? Which is, of course, the most logical thing to do, right? Power a Makita battery checker with a Makita battery. That's like the circle of life. Some shit like that. Right, let's go. Is it going to work? Yay! So you can power it off a Makita battery if need be. Now back to the wrap up of the video. If you want to know more about it, check out that other video. Like I say, it's the BTC04 from Makita. This is the BTC05. If you want to do the 12 volt batteries, I don't think you do it on this unit. It's a completely different unit called the BTC06. Okay, right, I think that about does it. Cheers Mitchell for the battery. Provided me with a bit of entertainment today. And I'll put links down in the description, etc. to buy one more info, blah 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 blah. Thanks for watching. Check out the blow video soon. And yeah, what else is there to say? Purple impact drivers, if you want a purple impact driver, like those ones at the back there. As I get asked for on just about every video I do, there's usually a link down in the description of where I get them from. Okay, done. Are we done? Better turn off this charger so I don't short something out. 
Okay, thanks guys. Have a good one. If you can think of anything else you want done with this thing, well, let me know. Cool. See ya. I'll get this whole bench area sorted out soon. I'm gonna jib up the back and redo the ceiling, put in decent lighting instead of just like having it laying on the bench. But yeah, gotta wait for certain things to sort themselves out first.